Hey there, it's Jeremy Ellis. Uh, I have a Maker 100 on GitHub. It's a course that I teach in class in person, and we go through a whole bunch of stuff uh, using the Arduino Portenta with a whole bunch of programs and videos on how to do those programs. Uh, one thing really important with robotics is being able to computer code. So on my library, the Portenta Pro Community Solutions Library, um, I have a dot seven um, area where I have a bunch of coding. So uh, let's just quickly go through installing a library. Uh, there are two spots, manage library and tools, or in sketch, include library, manage library, or add zip. You could, um, where the heck is download? Oh, I, I'd have to be on the main thing. Uh, might as well go there. Uh, code, you could download the zip file and then here uh, include the zip file, but it is better if it's an Arduino um, OK library to just do the search because it monitors it and it tells you if there's a, a version ready to be updated and stuff like that. Um, I am not using the Arduino Portenta, which is a $100 microcontroller, possibly the best controller out there. Um, maybe not the cheapest. Uh, but it's Arduino friendly and Arduino makes everything easier. So, but I'm using the Chao uh, XIAO from Seed Studio. It's $5 and I need my students to start with this, get familiar with this, because if they're ever testing out their own um, code, I'd like them to use this and maybe blow it up instead of the rather expensive Portentas. Uh, if you type in community, you can find the Portenta Pro Community Solutions. And I have the latest 0.7.8. Once I've tested it with students, it'll hit 1.0. But at the moment, it hasn't been tested with students. So I have it installed. Uh, let's go to it. You go to File. And let it just finish its thinking. Examples. There it is. Portenta Pro Community Solutions. And right down here, Coding Curriculum. I have my main uh, things I teach in coding. I typically teach in JavaScript, but I switch these over to C++ just for this. So let's see the first one. This is an assignment that I typically give my robotics kids. Uh, because it's using the LED and it doesn't use the serial monitor. So as far as getting started, it's probably the easiest thing. Uh, when you do this, make sure your board is properly, there it is. It's the seed with three E's, SAMD. Uh, XIAO, which I think is Chow. Um, make sure its port is the one that's recognized as the Seduino Chow, and then flash the code. I always flash the code right away because no point talking about it and dealing with all that programming issues if the darn thing doesn't run. Now, notice there are no includes, there's no fancy, nothing fancy here. Um, and it had a problem opening the serial port. That's really interesting. Uh, let's fire it off again. Now, with the Chow, it has an interesting, you see these two little gold uh, pads right about there. If you have a problem with the Chow, you need to connect those two together, a wire between the two, and it puts it into bootloader mode. On, unlike a typical Arduino, uh, the Chow figures out its port and its bootloader really, really well, and, and see how fast that was to compile. So let's look at the code. Oh, what's happening here? It flashed. Let's count after it flashes. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, 5,000. Okay, so that um, those seconds is kind of important. Let's have a look at the code now that we know it's actually working. Uh, typically, our Arduino programs have a setup. And they have a loop. Um, there's the loop. And you have your squirrelies at the start and squirrelies at the end. Some people put it on a new line. I just need as few lines as possible. So here we're setting up pin mode. Pin is that little LED that's flashing right there. We need to set it up LED built in to output. By the way, I often use LED G, B, or R for uh, red, green, blue. Um, the built-in one on the Portenta is green. Uh, this one's orange. Um, so for later code, you're going to see LED, B, uh, G, and, and R. I don't use R because that's a typical crash. So I stick with the green and the blue.
Um, so what this is doing is it's setting it to be low, it's waiting 200, it's setting it to be high, it's waiting 200, and then it's waiting five seconds. Um, that's it. That's all it does. If you look at it, it flashes on and off quite quickly, and then it waits five seconds. One thing weird about both the Chow and the Portenta is unlike a typical um, beginner Arduino, um, high typically turns the built-in LED on and low turns it off. Well, obviously here it's been reversed and it's to protect the board, I think, because um, this, the high sends it a voltage. And so what they've done with the board, these LEDs that are on the board, is it's hooked up to 3.3 volts and then you have to set it low grounding the other side of it. Um, as opposed to an old Arduino would be hooked up to ground and then you hook it up to 3.3 volts. But you might fry it if you're using 5 volts or whatever. So let's just run this where I flip them around like a typical old Arduino and see if I'm actually sort of know what I'm talking about. Um, there we go. This cool little box. You could probably drag and drop your program there. Uh, and so let's see, this light is constantly on. Oh, and then it goes off very briefly and it's on for five seconds. So that's really looking like uh, this. Oh. Let's think this through. Yeah, that should set it off. But it's actually turning it on for five seconds and then it's briefly turning it off. So it looks like the Chow does it the same as the Portenta. Uh, a little confusing for be beginners there. But that's it, that's the code. Uh, for my students, what they're supposed to do is SOS, which is three quick uh, flashes, three slow flashes, three quick flashes, then the five second delay, then a repeat. And the extra step I throw in is, can you do it with as few lines as possible? Because the beginner is just gonna copy this you know, a lot and change these uh, numbers. But there are fancier ways you can do coding. And um, yeah, so that's the assignment I give. Anyway, that's it.